All right, hello people. Um, welcome to a tutorial. Today I want to show you how to make a fully functional menu. All right, so what we need to do is the shop and it has a fully functional menu. Everything's functional and you can go left and right and then you can exit. Perfect. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to make this type of menu in your platform level. The first step is to make buttons. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna copy this screen here. So I'm not gonna do all of them. I'll do uh, a triangle here, this level thing, and maybe like the practice mode. So let's go into it. I'm just gonna speed this up. Make sure to subscribe if you guys want more of these tutorials. All right, here we have our basic menu and we can play around with this. We can make this work for what we need. First things first, we're going to make a selection animation. So what I'm just going to do is take this circle that we made and make another one that's behind a layer on a group 16 that's going to go on white. So you can see that that looks like we're selecting it. Now I'm just going to copy and paste this with new groups for the other two options here. What this allows us to do is to have an animation for when we are about to select the option we want. Next thing you can add is a flashing animation, and I'm going to show you right now. Alright, there we go. So, we're going to put these all on their own group. This is if you want a glowing type of thing. So, we're just going to set up a quick spawn loop for our flashing animation. So, um, just like this, spawn trigger multi- no, not 192, hold on. Okay, there we go. And then back to zero. And we can do create loop like this. We have to reset these so that they are above or equal to our fade time. So these are 0 0.5, so these need to be 0 0.5 if you want a perfect loop. And then you can throw them behind. And make sure you have 19 and 0. So now you can see they're glowing normally. Right now it's all three of them, but we can make it so that it's one by one. A lot of what we're going to be doing is using event triggers. So we're going to set this up as three different sequences. Alright, so this is going to be... Um, let's say practice okay so these are going to be our sequences up here and we're going to make a bunch of triggers we need three event triggers for each sequence one for the left one for the right and one to activate whatever we want when we jump i'm going to start with the right right now well i like to use right push but you can use right release or right push just make sure you only have one selected or else you'll have an infinite loop. Then you want to activate touch trigger and multi trigger uh, and I'll explain that in a second and we can do that group ID later. So we want to set this to group 22. Then we're going to do another one and this is going to uh, be less push. It's going to stay on group 22 and then we're going to change this event to jump push. All right. So now we have these three events. This one is for the right push and this one is for the left and they're all on group 22 so I'm going to write a thing that says group 22 I recommend using text objects to label your trigger sequences as it can get pretty chaotic if you don't yeah and then we could just copy and paste these over and put new groups on all of these events just like so now now we have to set each of these to target a group so first target is going to be 25, and then we'll do 26, and we're just going to go through and do this. And our last group is 33. Now I'm just going to write out what our targets are on the side. So T for target, and we started with 20, 25, and we ended on 33. So I'm just going to go through and do this. Alright, so each of these have their own targets. Now we're going to start with the move trigger. Um, and the reason we're using the move trigger instead of something like a toggle trigger, a spawn trigger, the reason is because events, when you start, when you toggle them on, they're always on. For some reason, even when you toggle them off, they're just always on. So, and if you use a stop to pause them, it works only sometimes, especially when you got this kind of issue. And event triggers are very finicky when you use spawn enabled. So what I found best works is using touch triggered. But to make them work, you gotta use move triggers. 
so what we do is we put um, this here we're gonna put it on the left and we're going to move using a spawn trigger and a multi trigger silent so that you have a zero move time then we're going to activate target mode and our target position group ID is going to be player one and we're using this move trigger to move the next set of event triggers on top of the player the next group of event triggers is under 24 24 and it's going to go to straight to p1 and you don't have to press dynamic mode you could but since we're stuck in a box you don't gotta work all right so what that's going to do is that's going to bring this this group down into the box when you left click now we're going to do the same for 26 or sorry 23 when you press right and you can set this up like this uh you need to have the right groups though since these are spawn triggered so for each group you're gonna have 20 uh the respective column so all i'm doing here is i'm setting up the move triggers to activate the next set of event triggers uh, and giving them the groups based on the target of the event trigger that they're attached to now we now what we need to set up is a return uh group so i like i just use the star um, I actually use this one, so I'm going to keep using it because I'm used to it. And each of these are set to their own group as well. 34, this one's 35, and this one's 36. Um, you could type out return group as well. Alright, there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to target, instead of P1, we're going to target our return group, our return star group. So in this case, it's 34. 30, 22 is going to go to its group, its return group, 34, and that works for both. As long as they have their respective activation groups, 27, alright, that works for both left and right, and this needs to be relayed to all of these. Alright, there we go, all set up. Okay, next we need to toggle all three of these white circles here. So, each of them have their own group, 16, 17, 18. And what I did in my level was I set these groups as well. Alright, so now what we're going to do is set up toggle triggers for our flashing animation. 18, spawn trigger, multi trigger. And you have to activate the next one, which is 17. If you go left, this one's going to activate 16, and it's toggling itself. Alright, so we're just going to go through and do that. Alright, now we gotta set them each to their own groups as well. I can speed through this as well. Alright, now what we're going to do is if you want a menu like my shop where you approach it and activate it in a certain proximity, we're going to use this collision trigger, which is a toggle block. And we're going to activate claim touch and we're going to activate a new group. This needs 37 and it's going to activate 38. Now we're going to set up a move trigger that moves the toggle block out of the way once you activate it. That way we can use multi-activate. First things first, 37, you can just move it over like 30 blocks, silent, spawn trigger, multi-trigger, and spawn trigger so we need it on 38. Awesome. Then what we're going to do is we're going to activate this, this event here. So the way to do that, you just got to move the event triggers. So, so we're going to move 23 down, silent, spawn trigger and target to player one, perfect. And now we're going to set this to 38 as well. All right, so let's test. So now we see our event here, our stuff isn't glowing, but now it is. Okay, first we need to smush these in together. That way we have nice set triggers. And now what we have to do is we have to start the first glow, which is going to be 16. So we're going to toggle this on, 16, spawn activate, 38. Awesome. Alright, so now we got that. Now it's going to glow when we activate it. Uh, we're going to hide this stuff so we don't have to worry about this ugliness. It works really well. Um, our events are working. Oh, they're breaking them. Something broke. It's very oh, right, right, right. Okay, this is the important part. We need to add stop triggers after every time we use it because otherwise it's going to keep going. Um, do spawn trigger, multi trigger, and we need to stop this this event group, which is going to be 22. All right, and that's going to happen every time. So you can set these to the special groups as you need. All 
this is the most important thing. It took me all night to figure it out. Like literally, I was sitting here. It took me five hours to figure out that I needed stop triggers to reset everything. All right, so there we go. Now we've got functions, a functioning uh, menu. Now we're going to add a selection part. So remember when we added that jump trigger? Now that's what we're going to be using. So for example, let's just put a sound effect that activates when we use different triggers. If you'd like, you can probably set up sound effects that activate when you click left or right. So if you select play, it says play, for example. This is going to be activated on 32. This is going to be activated by 29. And this is going to be activated by 26. Okay, now we got to make sure to stop all of these, um, all of these triggers when we leave. We can't leave one missing because otherwise it keeps going. A more efficient way of doing this is setting all of these events to one group and just stopping the one group. Okay, so now we have stop triggers for all of these. We can add like a camera so we can zoom back in. You can add teleports. You can add whatever you want, literally, like whatever kind of triggers you need, just activate them using this jump mechanic. Finally, let's just like pulse the background. All right, so let's test this. Go there, perfect, everything's working. Fire in the hole, and now our trigger's reset. Alright, so here in my level, we have basically the same thing, just six selections. Here are some collision triggers that I have set up. I have one that is a state in and out that flashes a diamond that shows that you can go in. And I have a collision block that's activated on exit, which resets the toggle block. This toggle block activates a big group of triggers that turns on the shop, changes the song, and a lot more. These work exactly how I showed you, and you can set up as many selections as you want. Just be aware of how many groups that these use up. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe for more, if you guys subscribe I'll keep doing these tutorials. Let me know what advanced tutorial you want, especially if it's within my level. Make sure to check over on my Twitch channel as well to see if I'm streaming. I'll be streaming my process once in a while, and yeah, I would appreciate the follow. Thank you very much for watching, goodbye!